week one's lesson from our handbook for new Stoics and the exercise that the Painted Porch team is going through was really about starting with one of the basic tenets of Stoicism, which is understanding and willingly accepting what is and what is not within your control. And when they say control, they mean complete control. It really comes down to truly drawing a line down the middle and being able to identify what is what you are able to control 100% and everything else. And everything else is really an area that you just have to fully recognize and identify to be able to better show up and control how you react, your impulses, your judgments, and so on. One of the greatest things that came from the lesson, and I'm going to quote it here, it says, if you bet your peace of mind on things not completely in your control, you're willingly forfeiting part of your happiness to random choice. And what he talks about here is that basically, if you focus, if you get really good at practicing, and it is a practice, but if you focus on understanding and recognizing that which is within your control, you will ideally never be disappointed. You will always get what you want because you will only ever desire that which you can control. I know it sounds like a big goal, but it's something that over time, as you continue to apply these exercises and practices, you'll get better and better at it. You're going to have bad days. We all do. We all have those moments where we should all over ourselves and should all over everybody else. Shoulds. <laughs> um, but through that, through these exercises, it can help you just sit down and reflect, you know, once a week or when you have a particular harrowing event to sit down and reflect or prepare ahead of time for it and really be able to identify what you can and what you cannot control. So I hope you enjoy some of our insights. Yep. The week. So we, we really touched on mine a lot. Like my big, my big thing was that I, I actually talked about in the review that I struggle to find events since, you know, each day really just kind of felt like another version of the same, which was me trying to work on this office. Um, I did have some smaller and bigger moments um, that, again, I realized that my desired outcome versus the actual differed, uh, and I'm still struggling to, you know, struggling with managing that, but that's where I felt, well, I just, it was the frustration, which everything's taking five times longer, exasperating me it makes me feel defeated so I just I, that was kind of my overall view of the week but I did through that realize that I'm suffering from a lot of shoulds my code of what it should be um, and uh, and struggling and being able to be able to just simply say like what you said the time is what it is and it took what it took um, without feeling disappointed in myself in allowing that much time to go by or some other criticism, self-talk criticism there. Okay, hold on. Pause. Yes. Raise your right hand. <laughs> Listen back. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is huge. I want you to hear what you just, really hear what you just said to yourself. Yeah. It's something I have to keep, keep reminding myself of, which was... Yeah. By the way, so I was listening to Ryan Holiday, the Obstacles Away author of a podcast today. He's the Daily Stoic. But that's what he said about Marcus Aurelius. He says, a lot of people criticize Stoicism because it's repetitive. And he goes, yeah, that's the point. Because it, you have to constantly remind yourself. So Marcus Aurelius, he was talking about, wanted to remind himself not to complain in court. So he's the king emperor, right? The philosopher king. So he's in court probably going, this is so boring. Oh my God, whatever his complaint was. So he wrote it down and he says, I got to not complain. And then three years later, wrote it down again mm -hmm. because he was struggling with it again. So just because you struggle with it, it doesn't mean it's not going to be a struggle. That's like, that's the point is to battle the struggles that might pop up again in a week or two weeks or two years. Yes. Yeah. And your point, uh, it's the same for 12 step programs is you go through your 12 steps and then you start over and you do it again and you do it again and stuff that keeps coming up, you just have to keep working on it. Same mm -hmm. with mantras, same with, you know, it's a practice. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not, a, it's not a perfection. It's a constant practice. 
Yeah. So give yourself a little credit is the point. Like give yourself. Yes. Give That's yourself why some. I make her yeah. Give yourself some of that it. and just go, you know what? You've done pretty damn well for yourself for 39 yes. Like <laughs> Give yourself I some credit. You. How about you, Sierra? What was your week one retrospective? So, so I actually, um, one of the things that I filmed in uh, yesterday was the kind of part two of when I was talking about my filming experience about the, the sun and the umbrella and the uh -huh. air conditioner, lawnmower and everything. And I actually, when I filmed that, I didn't write anything down. I just kind of talked. And one of the things that I kind of came to at the end of telling that story is I kind of just kept talking over a couple of takes was I was able to rationally work through the obstacles to get to my desired outcome, which was to get the filming done. And then what I just kind of like just said in my filming, and which I don't know if it was even one that I posted or not, but as I said is, I, 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 I accomplished my outcome was to get this filming and this message recorded. But what I have to understand is that my out, the only outcome that I have control over is if my message is true and authentic. I can, I do not have a con any control on whether the people who watch this find it valuable, interesting, or useful. That is out of my control. All that I can do is deliver my message in a way that is my absolute truth. I cannot control how it is perceived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was even kind of like, th that kind of just made it come full circle. Um, and also just coming from a place of love is that I realized that if I tried to film that in the place of frustration, the energy would have been all wrong is I had to bring it back to coming from a place of love. And you can control that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's, that's such a, that's such a profound thought there because as someone who struggles with perfectionism and is it right that you can so often get distracted or you become paralyzed to actually move forward you know mm -hmm. case in point the last two weeks um you know and and so it kind of goes back to you know i think i think you've literally like nailed it for me because a lot of the messaging was like from from the tarot cards was Get back to what it is you really want to do. Get back, refocus. It may not be what you're doing right now. And I don't know if it meant literally like with the office or not, but it was like, when it comes to your job, what you're doing right now might not be the right thing to be doing. So get back to what it is you really wanted to be doing. And that was the thing that kind of threw me off. I was like, well, what does that mean? And I think to your exact point, it's that, going back to creating the content and the messaging that is at the root of what it is we want to achieve and coming at that from that place of loving and, and caring. Like that's really the whole reason for creating PPS, right? It's not to, yeah. So it's having more of that heart centered approach to what you're doing. Including to yourself, Amy. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So thank you. And I think that's the root of why people say like, follow your passion or follow your strength or because there's a comfort in what you love. And so if you take it from there, you know, case in point, like once I started filming in my garden, it changed how I felt, how like, it just changed it for me. Yeah. So when you, no, when you connect back to what you love or your purest heart, your purest intent, it's so much easier to move forward because you, you, you come at it instead of, when you come at it from a fear place, it's like, is what I'm saying good enough? Is, how, how have I done a good job preparing? Is this good? Is this worthy? Are people gonna find this useful? That's all like fear and doubt. Mm -hmm. When you just bring it down to a level of like, I'm going to speak about what I know and what I love. 
and then just let it go. Yeah. And surrender the fact that like other people might be like, well, that's stupid. Okay, cool. Then don't do it. <laughs> people say that about everybody, right? People say that about Jesus or Gandhi or Tony Robbins or name the place. There's always detractors who think the other person is stupid. Yeah. Or, shit yeah. or whatever. Or like, you know, like Howard Stern says, like, uh, people people love me and listen and people hate me and listen but they're listening yep mm -hmm. yep so who cares <laughs> right exactly exactly yeah but and that's you know, it that too because it's a controlling your expectation about what happens which is very very huge and difficult well, yeah well yeah. it is but at the same time because you you don't control it and you want it to be perfect and you want 100% of the people to vibe with what you're saying, which is just impossible. Right. So you reframe it, reframe it, reframe it, reframe it. You never actually put it out there because you're afraid of that, of one person not liking it or five people or everybody or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if everybody didn't like it, you're like, okay, I need to really reframe this. Yeah. <laughs> right. Nobody likes yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. But what are the chances of that? It's just as, it's just as impossible as everyone hating it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know not everyone's going to hate it yeah because there's going to be at least a couple nice people in the room that go oh yeah that was cool well and sometimes people hate things that are uncomfortable for them to think yep. about that's you know true. like when somebody says something that's totally true and it kind of like it's like it kind of hurts you know like well, some people knew it, but some... i didn't need you to say it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, like I always say, like when it comes to your intuition, and this is something that that's coming up for me in my programming very soon, is this whole intuition piece, which I'm going to expand upon. A lot of people don't really understand what that they think it's some like woo woo thing is, but pay hey, the things that like make you go like wince because they are uncomfortable. Like there's probably a reason why it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Um, Somebody brought up a point of like, I wonder how many divorces are going to come up after this COVID quarantine. And it's like, if that makes you wince, then you have to look at like, why does that make you like, ouch? Why does, or if somebody says something that you feel like is like so super true and it kind of bothers you, mm -hmm. you know, like the, the insults that, that hurt the most, sometimes it, it hurts you because there's something that's the truth in it for you. And to the to the to the statement about that I told you, Rob, that um, Jack Miller said is you know hard on the issue, soft on the person. Mm -hmm. Is instead of you being upset about the person who said the thing that made you go, Ugh, like instead look at what what's making you go Ugh, about that, and actually just get down to like to the root of it. Or like you yeah. guys probably it sounds like in Tony Robbins, how they were like, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. Like. Make it simpler, make it simpler, make it simpler. Just get down to what it actually is. Because you could just keep being mad at the people who bother you or the people that say things that bother you. And you're never going to learn the lesson. It's just going to keep happening. Right. And you keep getting uncomfortable and you keep just avoiding it. Yeah. Rather than and you get pissed work. and you call that person a bad word and, and you think that they're rude or, you know, or you can actually listen to what's the message here as to why this is catching my attention every time. Right. So yeah, sometimes, sometimes you want people to, one. in that sense, if they hate your message, then maybe that's exactly what they need to inflict a change. Like yeah. maybe you have to be the person to say something that catches people like, Ooh, I don't like that. Ooh, that's, that stings a little. Right. It's like your muscles don't grow unless you're sore, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think there's there's always that balance of like the tough love is coming from a place of love, but also in a place to maybe push somebody for growth as well. You know, knowing when when somebody just needs a little like get uncomfortable for a minute, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah. And that's one of the things that, you know, sidebar, I've always loved about my friendship with Amy is because she's always kind of pushed the other side of my brain. 
likewise. It's something that, <laughs> yeah, that we, yeah, it's a good compliment because she often gets me in a place that's uncomfortable. And if I hadn't gone there, I wouldn't have had that opportunity for growth. But she always does it with love and she usually does it in the form of a question or yes. sometimes an opinion. Or sometimes an opinion. Yeah, but yeah. you know, since it's coming from Yak, it's coming from Yak. It's not coming from some on the corner who's just being a dick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's it's from a place of love, and she's not a bull. Right. So you know it's not from a fake place. It's authentic. Mm hmm But that's why it's easier, it's easier to receive on the uncomfortable end when you know that person is doing it Really not uncomfortable with the receiving. <laughs> sometimes, but again, sometimes. usually it's how you say it because there's a certain way you say it when it seems like it's coming from love, and a certain way you say it where it seems like it's being. Yeah. Which one am I more likely to receive? Mm -hmm. Not the one you're being because I'm gonna get I'm gonna get reactionary to you being aggressive. True, but again, back to Sierra's point, I would also say that. Correct. You might be but it's, it's, having an extreme reaction sure. to something that's not an extreme but there's delivery. But there's a lesson in both, is the yes. point. Yep. A lesson yep. in delivering, a, les a lesson in receiving. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's the essence of communication right there. Mm -hmm. is there is lessons in both. Mm -hmm. How yes. you deliver a message and how you receive a message. Yeah. And how you listen to a message. Yeah. Yes. So you should write that down because that's all communication <laughs> right there. <laughs> uh, to your point, Rob, it's the constant practice of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because you know you're not gonna get right all the time. Mm -hmm. No. But each time you do it slightly off, you're like, oh, I could have done it this way. Okay, file that away for next time. Right. Right. And honestly, that that's that's what always keeps you learning because yes. if that practice were to ever become perfect, you'd have nothing to discuss and nothing to learn. Right. It'd be like, okay, time to die because. That's it. Yeah. It's always, hopefully it's going to shift and things are going to level up. But, you know, it's, it's, it's that constant, yeah. you know, life. Yeah. Uh, George Leonard, the, the, the co-founder of Esalen out mm -hmm. in California, he has a book called Mastery. It's a really small book, but he always talks about basically that concept and that a true master never achieves mastery, that you always have growth and you're going to hit plateaus and he actually talks about you know the plateau may feel like you're not growing at all or that you've hit a wall or that you know it's just there's there's no there's you can't see the next uh you know mountain on the horizon but he says that's actually you want to embrace that because that is the sign that you're going to be ready for that next hill that comes up so and yeah. embrace the plateau is what he talks about yeah yeah all right, how about, uh, how about you, Rob? Actually, very similar to Sierra's. Mine were related to uh, a couple of things. Um, mostly to do with, similar to what Sierra said about when you deliver a message, how other people are receiving it. So I was struggling with delivering a message which I thought was spot on, but for example, Mike wasn't receiving it the way I wanted to receive it. And I was like, well, I can't control how he's going to receive it. And I can't control what he is then going to say. I can only try to say what I need to say the best way possible, which leads into obviously week two's mm -hmm. lesson. So that was a, a nice reminder, which logically I know, but in this new position and he's in good year, I'm here trying to do a show where the communication is done through audio and a and a video screen is a little different. So that was an adjustment to apply that same logic from afar. Because it's different in person when you're doing it emotionally and you can kind of sense that, whereas you can't really sense it through the screen all the time. Could could you could you summarize that message? What message? Just what you just yeah, said. Yeah, what's summarize what's the that? message you were, you were talking about? What what was the actual event? The event was just basically the event was, let's say, doing the talk show, doing the day to day talk show. So there was, I put it on Monday. The event was 4 to 7 p.m. doing a talk show. So incomplete controls were how Mike or anyone else reacts to my opinion or what they say in response. I cannot control that. 